Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to this evening's meeting. Laguna Madre Water District Notice of a Regular Meeting, March 22, 2017. Notice is hereby given of a regular meeting of the Board of Directors of the District to be held at 105 Port Road, Port Isabel, Texas on the 22nd day of March at the hour of 5.30 p.m. for consideration of the business of the agenda below. This notice is posted at the Office of the District on March 15, 2017 at 3 p.m. in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551-041-551-050 and a copy furnished to the County Clerk in Cameron County, Texas. We do have the presence of a quorum. Absent uh, right now at this time, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Whitey Thomas, who is out for medical. Uh, we certainly hope he is having a speedy recovery. If I may please have everyone stand for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Charles, invocation, okay. or Victor, okay. Lord, we are meeting today to conduct a matter of business, guide our hearts and our minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought, and speech. Thank you for being our source of guidance today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. At this time, item three, invitation to the audience for discussion. That includes the board and the staff, and the, there's no general audience. Would anyone openly like to share or discuss anything at this time? I'd like to just mention the, that uh, I received an email from Verizon uh, on the tower at uh, South Padre Island, the Andy Bui tank. Yes. They just sent me a sort of like an agreement so we can look at it. And I, uh, I just made a copy for myself and for the attorney and, and uh, so we can look at it. But the, I saw that the uh, price on it was kind of low, so we're just going to hold off on it until you know, we, we uh, agree on something higher, better, and uh, average like the other tanks. So, okay. I'll, uh, as you guys know, on the next next uh, meeting that we have, I'll pass you on the copy so you can have a thank you. you. Can have a copy of that. So. Anyone else like to share or discuss anything? That was Verizon. Verizon. They're the number one guys now. Mm. Yeah, they ought to be able to pay more than anybody. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. yeah, we can't discuss this now. No. Okay. <laughs> Yes, sir. Anything else? Okay. Moving to item number four. Consider and approve the minutes of the regular meeting of March 8, 2017. So everyone had a chance to review, discuss. Uh, Doyle, yes? Now we can discuss it here. And item number five of uh, general matter report. As it, at the bottom bullet it says agreement will be given to the district attorney and presented to the board for consideration and approval. Uh, I don't dispute that, but I recall that the board was going to be a little more active in negotiations with Verizon. And, you know, Rick's comment is spot on that it's real important that when this is done, you know, as I recall from the minutes, the board was going to be more active than just receive the report. That's correct. And does anybody remember differently? I don't oh. specifically recall. Oh, that. The, the board usually is uh, pretty uh, aware of everything that's going on by, by the time that, uh, see, the board is the one that approves the agreement anyhow, so we'll just uh, wait on that uh, discussion until further on. I that was the only item on. Okay. Any other comments about the uh, minutes from the last meeting? Is there a motion to approve them? Approve them? Motion okay. made by Mr. Kaplinger, seconded by R. Wells. Are all those in favor? Aye. They are. Motion carries. We have passed. Uh, moving to item number five, general manager's report, AT&T contracts. I uh, did provide a copy for you all to, so you all can uh, look at it at least. And I think I got into a, in a hurry to give you an, an, uh, the last meeting. I should have just waited because I, I think in December, it was mentioned to hold off because it's still five years away from that agreement uh, to terminate or, or expire. So I'm just going to wait and, and see what uh, transpires between now and, and uh, maybe in a few months. Okay. See what they if they can come up with a higher, better. Well, they're offering less money. Yeah. And then they're paying longer, now. In a longer term. But, but they're offering less money than they're paying now. Right. And the, the reason that, that so. I kind of asked that question, uh, it was about a year, maybe two years ago, because they started doing that about two years ago. 
say, well, no, we're not going to do that if, if it's less. But they, uh, they, they mentioned to me that, that the reason they're doing it is so they can make sure that, that all their new technology and everything is going to be upgraded, you know, ahead of time. That they can plan ahead. So it's still five years uh, away, right? Or in, at in that time, it was like seven years. And my only that? thing, comment is I oh. think they're they're trying to get ready for us to be prepared for when the five-year contract comes up for a lesser right, amount. Right. I mean, they're they're trying to, uh, but they're that's five years away. Just trying to get ahead for their projections, you know, that they have. I don't see them dropping their rates. I just don't jack mine with yeah. a few bucks. I, thank you. This is the information that I have requested to see, and you're correct that we discuss it in September, and then at that time we requested uh, a copy of the original agreement. And I have gone through the original agreement and looked at it, and as the board has pointed out, you're certainly wanting to ride a cheaper horse than what they were working with now, and I, I agree that the chairman that is probably advocated to start preparing and getting ahead, but if, if they, I'm thinking if they open the dialogue to discuss it, that, you know, we certainly can go back and say, but we're <coughs> open to discuss it, and then start working with that, uh, you know, under some terms, but, you know, come in with a, a more generous amount uh, for the district. Uh, like when this term ends, they'll be paying, you know, they've escalated 15% every five-year term, uh, three years, 3% three or more a year, and they were off of one and a half percent, a lot less. So I'm thinking that we can still go ahead and discuss this with them and offer, you know, starting out at a higher rate planning and then have a comparable rate increase the board make a decision on how many terms they want to consider at this time, maybe three or four terms. But Certainly equal rate. Right? Or, or, yeah. Starting at equal rate. Right? They're, they're going to end up paying 2000 a month, 1800 or so a month. You know, I would go back to, you know, 2000 a month and then do 15 or 20 percent per five-year period and give them three or four years. Uh, but at the same time, the clock is running on this. And the termination clause, and anybody you can terminate it. Hopefully, Rick's experience is not going to plague us here oh. that it's right. difficult to terminate. Yeah. I don't but think it'll happen because it hasn't happened to us. But but the clock's we'll running on this, and there's a one-year period in here that it can continue without any agreement with no rate increase. Mm -hmm. And so the board can you know run the clock out or negotiate it, or in good faith go ahead and negotiate a better uh, agreement for the board. For the district, excuse me. So I am open to, you know, start the dialogue. But after we sing yeah, this, I think yeah. everybody's in agreement. Hey, we need yeah. to. Well, what, I, what I'll be doing is kind of getting in touch back with them and you know letting them know what, what we think, is, and, and then negotiate mm -hmm. a little bit, and then when when I think it'll be ready, well, I'll bring it up. Back well, again. what would be good ammunition for us would be to find out across the valley, some, maybe some other water districts if they have uh, antennas on towers, yeah. find out what they're getting paid. That way we, you know, we can see if we're comparable or not. Yeah, I, I can do that. Uh, I believe that there was a page in there that I included that they had provided for us. That there was other entities that they paid, but it was like way low. Nothing compared to ours. So There's one section here that does concern me. Uh, that What page? Uh, page five, uh, second paragraph. Lisa or further agrees not to permit other cellular telephone company telephone operators other than DC to place operate or place uh, or operate their equipment on the property or premises during the term of the agreement or any extension thereof. Are there other people on the tower, or, or do we have the district? No, tenants? there's there's nobody else except uh, our antennas and our equipment. So that right, so that's certainly something if we negotiated a new contract that we strike out. <laughs> we could. We could. Uh, so I, I am open to, yeah. again, open to going ahead and start the dialogue, counter with a better opening. But first, I'd like the board to maybe have this as an agenda item and kind of discuss some parameters of terms of agreement, length of time. 
and then some things that you know you can take and, and go back to them with. The, the current the current contract the uh, term ends May first, twenty twenty one. And there's a one year extension if right. if if nobody writes six months ahead of right. time right. to terminate. And then I have some other notes on here that really we need legal to look at closely and some of the other things. So I'd like to see this back on as an agenda item and kind of, you know, come up with some starting points okay. to discuss this. Or well, we can also add it to our workshop. Yes, we would also. I'm open to either. There's like we were one thing we'll agree on there's not a huge rush. At the same time, if they're planning, I want to accommodate that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Carlos? No, that's it. Okay. Move to item number six, uh, district engineer's report, Charles. Uh, yeah, the only item I have on here is the, this, the status of capital projects, basically an updated spreadsheet just showing the invoices that have been routed. Um, you know, for example, the water distribution pipelines, that's that. Uh, well, we've spent uh, 407000 this year, and the remaining amount on the purchase order is 65000 and that's just the final payment for the contractor at GNT uh, who completed the work in Port Isabel already. Uh, the next line item with activities, the wastewater effluent reuse system, and that's the uh, contracts for CSA and, and the engineering at, at the Port Isabel sewer plant. And it's basically the same thing goes when you jump to the series 2016. It's just uh, work involved there for the outfall extension and the sewer plant. And then um, as we break into the SDC funds, uh, water plant one controls restoration. That's that's the work that Brownlee is doing at, at the water plant to determine our capacity improvements or what we need to be out there. And we should have the report ready to present on April 12th uh, for our findings out what, what's going on there. So we're working on that as we speak. And then um, the next one's the out street. That's just any final payment. <coughs> um, and then all the sewer SDC is the contracts with uh, Ferguson uh, for the clarifiers and so on and so forth in, in their various accounts. And then as we jump over to page two, um, that transfer pump station improvement for 24000 that's uh, that enclosure we're going to put around our pumps to protect them from the weather. And so that submittal has already, uh, we gave comments back to the contractor, so we're just getting the submittal released, and we should get that building going in April um, there at the water plant. And so as far as, um, you know, that pretty much wraps up all the major items. Uh, the, the, if you jump down to grit removal from aeration, 35, 17, 71, 72, if you see there, there's a budget item here with a balance of 99,550. Um, that's basically to, to fund uh, the action items that are on the on the meeting tonight. So, so that's where it's allocated. I, I can barely uh, the, the action items, like for the, the, the bids we had on the land clearing okay. and the maintenance equipment, that's the funding account for, the, for that item. And that, that wraps up the status. Any other questions for Charles? Thank you, Charles. Move to item number seven, uh, Director of Finance reports on Mona. Yes, um, based on the budget that we have, the eight million five hundred and forty-six thousand. Um, the time frame completed so far is forty-one percent. The revenues have at achieved a thirty-nine percent, and the expenditures have reached a fifty percent, which means we are having more expenditures. Uh, but that same thing happened last year. So we're kind of like on this month that are a little bit low, and yeah, once that we go into the summer, you know, we're hoping that this month will um, uh, reach uh, a better um, increment in the revenues. And um, we also are working on investing uh, four millions out of the Texas Water Development Board loan that we got. We got uh, five millions of point 138,000. Out of those five one, we're gonna invest four million, and um, we're expecting that we got quotes from four banks. Uh, three are the three were the ones that um, had the highest rates, the rates of range from 1.02 to 1.40 percent. So in the lapse of a year so far, we're gonna get about forty thousand dollars. You know, instead of just having seen the the money in the checking account or in an IBC, which is right now is forty two percent interest point forty two, we're gonna get um, this um, rate up to one point forty. So we got the the information 
this morning and uh, between Mr. Galvan and I were um, putting the schedules together and tomorrow we're going to um, fill out the, the documentation. And um, I don't know if you have any questions about that, um, but the next item that I have is on the RF financial compliance. As I'm pretty sure that you're aware that uh, we need to disclose all the, the bonds and all the operational information to the SEC. And um, we are in compliance. I mean, even though we're late with the audit, I mean, we already provided the information as a temporary basis. And uh, the information was due this Friday, so we provided um, on the 15th, so we're um, caught up with that. And um, the financial advisor accepted the information, so, so we should be ready to go and just waiting for the outages to come. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Moving item number eight, thank you, Senator. Moving item number eight, consider and reject all bids for the Port Isabel uh, monofill land clearing. Bid WW-17-03-01. Charles, or Victor, would you like to? Uh, this one, I mean, we, were, we went out for bids for this land clearing. Uh, uh, looked through it, every, everything was, came out higher than what we anticipated. So at this time, we just asked them just to reject all the bids. Um, we walked with a couple of boys, we walked the site. Uh, I think we were going to tackle it in-house instead. Buy a brush hog. I make a motion to uh, reject all bids. Second. Motion made by Mr. Kaplinger, seconded by R. Wells. Are all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Was there a comment, Mr. Wells? Uh, I was disappointed in the bidding process, the bids that were put out. The bids for the land clearing was included with the purchase of the tractor. When it was advertised, it was advertised for a higher horsepower than what was actually in the bid specs. And there was a necessity for an addendum. And then I did speak with a couple of contractors that didn't bid because the bidding process requirements were burdensome financially with the performance bond and everything. The comment made to me by one individual said, look, I did a job for IBC Bank down the river, and they didn't have this bit of big of restrictions on us. So, as I said early on, these guys clear brush for a living. They don't necessarily do what you might expect a regular contractor to do. If you're going to do the work yourself, my reported to me that the projected bid was going to be eight to ten thousand dollars to do the job. So if y'all can do it cheaper, get after it. But if you're running into something that's more costly, it would be my suggestion that you know you go ahead and, and pursue these bids a little differently. I spoke to Mr. Galvan before that it's really important on these things that you solicit the bid rather than just go out and say, here we are. I've done that just picking up the phone and calling some people. And I'd, I'd like for the district to do the same thing. Not well, we the we did solicit to about nine different uh, contractors. Uh, we, had, we had nine different contractors we, we, we talked to and we had just, out of those nine, only, only two of them showed up to, to see the, the and project. Because of the process is the comment that's being made. Yeah, that was what Mr. Roberts told me. He said, you know, I got the packet, and I said, well, there's not enough money in this to do that. So um, I'm suggesting that, you know, that be given some consideration. Bottom line, I want to save money for the district. And so that's what we're after here. Thank you. Thank you. Moving to item number nine, consider and approve change order number one for the construction of the Port Isabel wastewater treatment plant outfall extension. Charles? Yeah, I recommend no action. It's kind of the second time it's come up, but I think uh, the plan at this point is to proceed in-house. So, so that, that's basically, uh, it, it's for the clearing at the monofill. Okay. At this time, is there a motion? No, there's no, no action. motion at this time. No, there's, it's considered and approved. Uh, no motion. 
Item number 10, consider and award the bid purchases of maintenance equipment for the monofill land clearing process at Port Isabel Wastewater Treatment Plant, bid number WW-17-03-02. If, if you look at what we were given on the bid proposed, you see if we implement uh, has the overall lower bid, but at the same time their equipment was higher uh, than Newhouse was proposing. Again, I go back to where I don't think it was really clear in the bidding exactly what people were to bid on. If you're buying a tractor, that's one bid. If you're buying some equipment, that could be a supplement. The way it's broken down to me, I'm seeing as you know three bids here, three different items. Uh, even though new house, I mean, new house was cheaper on the equipment. I believe that in my experience that Seaver Eflin is still going to have good and comparable equipment. It's been asked before for y'all's information. These tractors can use other brands of equipment. It's based on the category of the hitch. For example, on the three-point hitch, there'll be at least a category two. So if you have an eight or 10 foot disc, it will work on either tractor. So you're not bound to buy the equipment from the same vendor. All I would make sure is that it's the same category that will, is required uh, for the implement. I'll make a motion to approve the low bid of the equipment. Motion made by uh, D. Wells. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Kaplinger. Are all those in favor? Yeah. They are. Yep. Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. Good job. Good. Moving on to item number 11, disbursements. Consider and approve the disbursements. If there are any questions, and in particular, one disbursement, let's discuss it now. Otherwise, motion to approve all the disbursements. I've got some questions. Okay. Uh, page one of nine, uh, looking down at Act. ACT pipe and supply, uh, stainless steel repair clamps. My question is, was some other vendors contacted, was this a comparable price? Did you shop it around? Yes, and it, it wasn't just the repair clamps. I mean, that, that's all that fits in there. It was other material that, that was purchased, but it, we did have four bidders on this. We did go up for four. So you, it was a bid or just a solicitation? Oh, solicitation. Yeah, solicitation. Okay, so you did do that. And that's available if we want to look at it? Yes. Awesome. Same thing on, I'll ask the same question of Amkim. Is that a contract or is that just a vendor? Okay. That one's a, our, our yearly... Uh, or a caustic citrus acid? Yeah. Yeah, we've already we've contract. already proved yeah, we've already yeah. proved all those. That's, that, yeah. that answers that. Uh, same thing on page two of nine, those chemicals, uh chem trade chemicals, that's a contract. It's a contract. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Contract. Then I'm gonna look down on that same page, Denali Water Solutions, roll off containers. I thought they were supplying the containers. The extra containers. Uh, yeah, I mean there shouldn't be a fee for the containers. It's just based on the loads that have been hauled. That's <coughs> that's how it's being invoiced. Yep. So is this for the services or the containers themselves? It, it would have to loads. Be the, the the PO's only rent for services. There's no there's no method to pay for containers. Okay, that's why I asked if it it's listed here, roll yeah, off containers. Roll off containers. Right. It's for the services. For the okay. with, with the loaded containers. And then right below that extra fixture supplies, we spent $2,800. I'm going to ask again that that was all, you shopped it around. Yes, sir. Yes. And then page three of nine, Ferguson Enterprise, brass and PVC material. <coughs> yes, sir, that one too. Uh, we have four, four different vendors that, that we solicited. Are they just vendors in the area, or did you check other vendors out of the area, out of the valley? Uh, no, just the ones in, in, in the valley. Is there an issue with taking and, and checking with somebody out of San Antonio? Uh, not, not really an issue. Just, I mean, we, we've checked before at uh, 
transportation with the freight with the freight charges a lot more than what they charge here. <laughs> But not always, because they deal, all, my experience is a lot of times they deal more value, and so they're actually getting cheaper. If I want to buy cable for my zip lines, I go to Houston Wire and Cable, and those folks sell it cheaper than anybody, and you factor in the freight, they're still half price. So it's, you know, it's, I'm, I'm encouraging you to not be stuck, what I call south of the Mesquite Curtain. In <laughs> the King Ranch is kind of the ski curtain, and we get stuck down here and look outside of the area uh, for some of these bigger items that you know we're spending money on, and take in consideration that you know even the freight may be a little more or not, but the product the product will be a lot cheaper. I'm encouraging that. That's all my questions. Anything else to discuss on the disbursements? A motion to approve the disbursements. So moved. Second. Motion made by R. Well, seconded by Mr. Kaplinger. Is everyone in favor? Aye. They are none opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. It's a short, sweet meeting. Happy spring break to everyone. Enjoy the final. Hope you all have a great evening.